Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Rushing for the Plunder. Our scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 15. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king, for he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Samuel was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I've carried out the Lord's command. Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle I hear, Samuel demanded. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle, Saul admitted. But they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you, Saul asked. And Samuel told him, Although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, Go and completely destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, until they're all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everything else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, and plunder to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, or your obedience to his voice? Listen. Obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft, and stubbornness as bad as worshipping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, Yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command, for I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. But now, please forgive my sin, and come back with me, so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel replied, I will not go back with you. Since you have rejected the Lord's command, he has rejected you as king of Israel. As Samuel turned to go, Saul tried to hold him back and tore the hem of his robe. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to someone else, one who is better than you. And he who is the glory of Israel will not lie, nor will he change his mind, for he is not human that he should change his mind. King Saul failed to go all in with the mission to serve God. His specific instructions were to destroy everything. And this is a trait of the imperfection of human nature. We imagine there's a little glory in it for us if we just tweak the plans. Saul had been instructed to destroy the entire target, but he wanted to please his troops, so he held back the best of the plunder to throw a party. Samuel had guided Saul, being a connection between God and the king. Now Samuel had to deliver the crushing message that God would replace Saul for his disobedience. This passage is generally taught as a caution for leaders, and it is. However, there's more in it than just a leadership seminar. This event in Israel's history is illustrative of what can happen to any of us when we get lax or sloppy in doing what God called each of us to do, whether it's as a parent or a student, a plumber, a doctor, or a telemarketer. And the hinge of that principle falls on where we imagine our security stands. Saul was afraid of the people's support and what it would mean to his position. So he gave them what they wanted instead of what God had commanded. And when called on it by the prophet, he then blamed the people. Saul was a sad excuse for a leader because he tried to claim a victory while ducking responsibility. You cannot have both. 
for you today. If you are as quote-unquote important as a king or a business leader or part of a church body or simply responsible for nobody but yourself, you are serving God. And in that relationship, you have his word to guide you. And it's without question that we must be found faithful stewards of the time, talents, and tithes God has placed in our hands. To do less is to dabble in discipleship. God calls us to go all in, not just sample the waters of public opinion. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.